Interphase Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, and Lancaster Fairfield Community Action Recycling and Litter Prevention. Welcome to Fairfield Today, or at least the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities episode, monthly episode. I'm uh, here at in the front window of Art and Clay on Main in the Square 7 Coffee House with Temple Custer, who's the general manager here. Temple, welcome to the program Thank once again. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. You have become my go-to guy. Uh, whenever <laughs> we need to do something fun, we come down here. Well, so. it's usually a lot going on, so that's a good thing. <laughs> and with school out now, we're, uh, we urge you to... Uh, to have a lot of fun and one of the things you can certainly do especially on a rainy day is stop down here and uh, and partake of a cup of coffee or a smoothie or a uh, wonderful buckeye what's the, what's the frappe oh, the buckeye frappe the buckeye frappe yeah or the milky way frappe both both good choices in my mind a diabetic dream yeah so <laughs> uh, anyway we have been open now uh, uh, with the score 7 concept for for a month or so, a couple months now. How's, no, about, how's it? about four weeks. Uh, four weeks yesterday. How's everything going? It's going well. It's going really well. You know, I think that uh, whenever you open up a new business, you're not 100% sure what to expect, and um, you know, people, the, the community has been, you know, very receptive. Um, they've been great about patronizing. Uh, the, you know, the bottom line is we have a really good product, and mm -hmm. I think when you have a good product in a good location, the rest will follow, and uh, and so that's what we're seeing start to happen. We're starting to get some regulars, which is really neat for us to see familiar faces come in every day and uh, you know the, the menu is growing and all things are good and headed in the right direction. Good and there's always this and, and you're open at seven o'clock in the morning so we if are. someone wants to slide by on their way to Columbus there's a, plenty of places to park usually on the street at that time and what a lot of people don't know is that right next door the, that the vacant lot next door, we're able to use that for parking. We so do. We rent that lot every single day of the entire year, with the exception of Art Walk during the festival, uh, when it's otherwise occupied. But for the rest of the time, all of our customers can use that lot um, at any time. And we are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day but Sunday. Sundays we are open now also, uh, 10 to 2. Uh, Saturdays 7 to 4 and Fridays 7 to 9 in the evening. Okay. So we're here all week. Okay. Well, let's talk about Fridays a little bit because okay. uh, starting last week mm -hmm. as, uh, as this show airs, uh, the musical stylings of the wonderful Ed Luby. Edward Luby, yes. Um, and that's something we're really try trying to focus on is um, and we hear a lot of that from, um, from both the community at large and also the, the community that lives closer to downtown is that they are looking for things to do on the weekends where you can stay in town and so we're hoping to, to add to that agenda um, and, and in conjunction with the Friday night bandstand and uh, Destination Downtown Lancaster doing the Saturday movies. Um, we also will be having offerings on the weekends so we're um, hoping a couple, couple Fridays out of the month to have music and entertainment down at Art and Play in Square 7 and on the nights that we don't have music maybe offering something a little different. Um, for example, this coming Friday on the 14th, we have Dad's Night Out in honor of Father's Day. Uh -huh. All the wonderful fathers that we have in our community. So on Dad's Night Out, um, that will run from 6 to 9 p.m. and we will feature a discount on pottery painting as well as um, Oh, free pretzels and root beer and music and things of that nature. Oh, okay, so, awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, now during the week, and especially now for this this summer, you have a lot of offerings for families and children. We do. Talk about your we Monday do. program. Well, our Monday program is um, sort of a spin-off from our after-school art program that was very successful during the year. Um, every Monday from 9.30 in the morning until 10.30 in the morning, we will be offering an art session for school-aged children. Um, and they can be anywhere ages 5 and 6 all the way up to 13 and 14. We get a real eclectic mix. Um, as far as ages go. And so we'll be exploring all different types of mediums from painting and decoupage to collage to clay and even working with some glass. Oh, cool. So we have really, really neat uh, projects every Monday. There are 12 Mondays in the summer for the, for the kids this year that, that are enrolled in school. So those classes are $10 a piece or you can do a punch card for $80. 
and come as many times as you want. So essentially you end up saving $40 that way. Okay. But that includes all your instruction, all your materials, and uh, you're out the door with the project every Monday. Okay. Well, as this program airs first on Thursday, uh, you were coming toward the end of the first week of your first art yeah. camp. Art camp. Um, we did art camps at Art and Clay about two years ago. Last summer we were in transition and didn't have the opportunity to get them together. And we had a lot of people asking for art camps. And so we're actually doing three this summer. Um, the one that we're currently doing right now is uh, Cosmic Kids Space Camp. So the kids are doing everything from paper mache alien masks to um, they've done their own uh, uh, footprints, moon footprints that we've done in stepping stones. They're working with glass. And they're also talking about artists like uh, Chelsea Bonestall or uh, Vincent Van Gogh. So they're getting some art instruction and a lot of play. Um, they've even sampled the, um, the astronaut ice cream this week. So we've really taken the theme and run with it. Um, in, in July, following the Lancaster Festival, we will have Superhero Camp, where kids will come in, they'll make their own persona, their cape, their mask. Um, we'll be doing storyboarding, we'll talk about pop art, and some pop artists like Roy Lichtenstein, um, and some of the more famous uh, comic book illustrators, and we'll be doing all sorts of fun stuff with that as well. And then in August, right before school starts, we'll be doing a spectacular sculpture camp downtown, where we'll be focusing on wire sculpture, paper mache, clay, all different types of, types of um, sculpture, and in conjunction with that, studying some of the really cool new sculptures that have popped up downtown this summer. We're going to talk about that in a little yeah. bit with uh, with Pam Whiteley, our Blue Shoe, uh, Blue Shoe Arts Director, uh, and she's in the process of creating a, a, one of those pieces for the uh, for the outdoor downtown uh, sculpture tour. Yeah. Uh, and well, let's let's get back again to the to the after school program. You kind of built that not just as a fun way for kids to come and spend an afternoon after school on a Tuesday and Thursday. But it was also very educational, and it was it was really part of the Ohio art curriculum, correct? Yes. Um, everything that we do with our art curriculum, we follow the Ohio Department of Education guidelines um, for homeschoolers. And the reason that we do that is twofold. First of all, we want to get it right. We always want to make sure whatever product we're presenting at Art Clay is top-notch, whether that's instruction or clay or glass or right down to our coffee. Um, but the second reason is that, unfortunately, at this time in Lancaster City Schools, there is no formal art right. instruction for elementary age children and so this was a really um, a great way for us to offer that to our community and so the kids are not only you know it's not, it's not a babysitting service they definitely come in and they learn something I think you know you your daughter was was one of our star students this year and um, so we really spent a lot of time researching projects researching artists um, so that they weren't overloaded at the end of the day with, in, with instruction, but they walked away having learned something. And, and they made some really neat projects. They did make some cool stuff. And some of them were very spot on with what you showed them as their, their example. Amazing. Really neat. Amazingly, a lot of, yeah. A lot of young talent. Yeah. Um, and we also, we don't leave out the preschoolers either, I have to right. tell you this. We have our own little slew of uh, mini artists that come in. Um, I have one and two year olds that come in here on Wednesday mornings. Um, we started it out as a preschool Picasso program. Um, we are here every Wednesday from 9.30 until 10.15 in the morning. It's just $8 and that's in all your supplies and instructions. Mm -hmm. um, we've since uh, taken that, pro that uh, program and stepped it up a little bit to uh, one called Paint Me a Story. Oh, cool. So now you can bring your preschoolers in, they'll hear a story, and then we'll do a project that corresponds back to that story. So, for example, we may be reading uh, the book Little P and we may be making pea pods. I have to tell you though, these little kiddos, they're they're so cute, they love to paint. So no matter what project we put in front of them, we we'll always end up and in the end, end with, with a paint. paintbrush. So. And then the way that's structured, that can either be hands-on with mom or dad or yeah, grandma. Yeah, or there's always a guardian with them. Caregiver, or they can step back and you'll just let the child work on it themselves. Absolutely. What, depending on what, what that family wants. Right, right, you know, absolutely. Very cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, another event coming up. Uh, is it the, the 29th? Mm -hmm. uh, Petacular? Petacular Saturday. This uh -huh. is something people have been asking for this. Um, you know, we, we're all about doing handprints of babies and footprints of babies, and we do, you know, a zillion mugs and plates all year round. But I have a lot of 
customers out there whose babies are four-legged and they are their pets. And so we are setting aside a special day for the, uh, for the pet families. They can come down on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll be doing paw prints on tiles, or if they want to put them on a plate, you know, we're not we're not real strict here at Art and Clay. So, um, so we'll be doing helping and people. dog bowls. You have dog bowls here. Yeah, we do have dog bowls, three different sizes, as a matter of fact. Oh, there you go. Um, so we'll help them paint the paw prints and, and get those images down. We'll have a professional photographer on staff that will be doing pet photos, and we'll have some goodies for the animals as well. So just kind of a fun, fun different thing to do with your pet pet day out. We may have to bring Miss Molly the Wonder Dog, and the place may never be the same. Yeah, I'm looking forward She'll to it. Terrorize pets from all over three counties. Okay. Uh, before we t start get into the into the big kind of push that we're getting nearer and nearer the Art Walk, which you had mentioned earlier, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the new products that you have here. Oh yeah. You got a lot well, of neat stuff. Yeah, in anticipation of Art Walk, what we see every year is that. Um, Leading up to the festival, we, the tourism actually spikes quite a bit in downtown Lancaster. Um, you know, I know we have the outer belt now that goes around downtown Lancaster, but you'd be surprised how many people still make it their way down Memorial Drive on their way to Hocking Hills for a weekend. And they love nothing more than to stop and, and check out this charming downtown, which is becoming more and more vibrant uh, every year. So with the influx of visitors to their area, we want to be able to offer a few more items for them, tokens and treasures and whatnot. So we have been beefing up our retail and gift gallery area. We've got some really cool new funky, eccentric, uh, gift items in there from, you know, bags made out of coffee bags to uh, really neat pens and collectibles and things of that nature. Um, we also are doing really well with the Glass Fusion program here at Art and Play. So we have more and more Glass Fusion items to sell and we have more and more people coming in to actually make their own Glass Fusion items. Um, and then with that, of course, we always have a lot of really cool blue, blue shoe art around it's available for people as from, well as some art rock stuff and art rock stuff there, yeah, yeah some of our little chair covers up here from mm -hmm. art rock so yeah okay. if you whatever you can't find somewhere else you'll probably be able to find here and that will be the focus of the uh, of, of the art walk exhibit here on is it mm -hmm. the 20th 19th 19th 19th, 19th. Friday July the 19th, 19th of July mm -hmm. yeah art rock is always a um, crazy time um, you know we're always very flattered I think we have the most visitors um, part of that might have something to do with our location. <laughs> we are located conveniently next to the beer garden, but um, I'm sure that's not why we have so many people in here. I'm sure it's because <laughs> of, of all the fabulous not. things going on at Art and Play. So, um, but we will be featuring all of all 17 of our Blue Shoe artists on that night. So there will be a lot of mini gallery shows within the walls of Art and Play. Awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, Temple. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? Um, just about any way you can think of. Of course, the old-fashioned way, we love people to pick up the phone because we like to be able to, to Do people talk. still do that? Or they... You know, they do. And, and a lot of times they do because they want more. They want to hear more. Right. Um, so we spend, we give very elaborate uh, explanations via the telephone. Um, of course, we have artandplayonmain.com. And we'd love it if you'd like us on our Facebook page. Um, I in particularly love that because it's so much easier for me to update a Facebook page than it is to update a website. So um, we, we try and keep up with that every day, every other day on the Facebook page as well, which is also Art and Play. Okay. The only thing they can't do is they can't text you. I Unless suppose you give, they you want to give everybody your cell yeah, phone number well. so they can text you in the middle of the night <laughs> yeah. if you play? Then I'd never get anything done. Well, that's a good point. Well, uh, Temple Custer, thank you so much for uh, Temple Custer Montagnes. That's okay. That's I'm okay. regressing. I went that's back okay. 25 years. Uh, thanks so much. When we come back, we'll talk with Pam Whiteley, who is the director of Blue Shoe Arts, and we'll talk with her about the Downtown Sculpture Project, as well as a couple of other things, including this month's featured artist, Dina Riker. Hi, I'm Dave Ward, Lancaster Fire Chief. I'm Ken Sprague, president of Hamburg Fireworks and the Fireworks Factory Outlet. Last year in Ohio, there was over $137,400 in property loss to homes caused by fires started with fireworks. So please do your part to minimize these risks by using the following tips. Be prepared. Obey all the laws of your community. Always wear safety glasses when shooting off fireworks. Have a hose, bucket of water, or even a fire extinguisher nearby. Keep your pets in mind. Animals have sensitive ears and may be extremely frightened by fireworks. Be safe. Purchase only legal fireworks that are approved by the Consumer Product Safety Commission and American Fireworks Standards Laboratory. Follow the directions on the label and set family rules. Use common sense. Have a designated shooter, somebody that is responsible and familiar with all the fireworks. We are proud to provide safe, 
public displays throughout the county. For more information, visit our Facebook page at Hamburg Fireworks Display. And on behalf of the Lancaster Fire Department, we'd like to wish everyone a safe and happy 4th of July. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Welcome back. Uh, joining me now is Pam Whiteley who is the director of Blue Shoe Arts. Pam, welcome once again. Thank you. You've got a lot of exciting things going on. First of all, you have, you have more artists than you've had, I think, when, to, since you started. You have 17 artists now, is that Yeah, correct? it kind of fluctuates a little bit, but yeah. And how, I mean, how often do the, do the artists come in? What's, what's, what's kind of the, 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 the typical day for your artists? The schedule right now is set to be um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And there's two groups that come in. There's an 8.30 to noon group and then a noon to 3.30 group that comes in. Okay. And about six or seven per group um, that come in at that time. Okay. And you're still doing a lot of, a lot of fun new things. You're kind of getting away a little bit from the folk art feel. And yeah. a lot of folks are doing a lot more abstract stuff. And right. Right, a little more exploration of their own style too, I think is, is the big thing and um, we've started some new three-dimensional projects to kind of introduce them to that in different mediums. So I saw those. I mean, it, may not, it may be too soon to show what these masks look like. Yeah, but, uh, they're secret right now. Maybe, maybe whenever they're finished we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll get those masks we'll in. We'll definitely make an entrance show. for sure. But they're kind of, one that reminds me of a big, a big giant Max from Max and Ernest. That's right. kind of cool. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the stuff we have in front of us here. The uh, you you are participating this year in the downtown sculpture tour. Right. Uh, in the past, that has been artists that were kind of a traveling exhibit that would mm -hmm. spend a year here and move on somewhere else or whatever, and it was coordinated by by an organization. But this year, they decided to bring it all local. Right. And um, Rick Licklider is working with four of the local high schools, um, and they've already installed their their um, sculptures downtown. And I am going to I'm collaborating with Forest Rose, Thomas Ewing, Lucia Arts um, for our our sculpture. Okay, and that's what we have here in front of us. Uh, kind of describe the the, the two uh, the two processes of well, we, we um Thomas Ewing had an eighth grade class that visited Forest Rose for their field day, so we decided on that day to take a bunch of clay down and have everybody make their own um, pinch pot. And um, we had to put a hole in it just so that for installation, because they're going to be slid over a um, piece of rebar and kind of stacked in like a totem style, um, with, and it'll have like an end cap of kind of like a bird bath type okay. looking, uh, and, and it'll have holes in it so that when it rains or if there's any uh, weather that it'll kind of turn into a fountain. Um, so these are done, and then the next step that we're working on is getting them all glazed so that they'll be like this. This is before they've gone into the kiln, and um, then we have a load already in, and I wish they were cool enough to bring out to show you a little more of the finished product, but they're still cooling. Okay, and this will be installed at the edge of the lot Right, next, next door. Next door to Art and Clay mm -hmm. at 150 West Main Street. So that'll be exciting. So And that, that'll be up in time for the art walk. And right. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks we'll be installing that. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah. That should be very exciting. And, and there are a couple other pieces that have been done uh, in conjunction with Rick uh, and Blue Shoe Arts. There's the flowers that are up next to uh, Fairfield Federal at the gazebo and then there's the uh, little flower display right right behind the the bench outside of our building here right. so so it's kind of neat to see kind of the collaborative I mean that's really what this is 
exactly what this place is all about. Right. Uh, so it's, this is a collaboration of our Blue Shoe artists, our students at Forest Rose School, right. uh, all of whom have disabilities, mm -hmm. and then the students at, at, uh, uh, at Thomas Ewing who came out to help that day, and then of course Rick who is a, who is a professional artist exactly. here in town. If people are, aren't, aren't familiar with the name of Rick Licklider, uh, he, he, he's done the large sculpture park that's just south of town on 33 with the real giant majestic eagle and the turkeys mm -hmm. and the deer and all that really cool stuff there. Very neat. Well, let's talk uh, ab about your, your plans first for, uh, for Art Walk. Yeah, any, anything exciting going on? Anybody with some new, new work that they're working on that will yeah. be debuted then? I think we'll continue to showcase um, just the independent art that's being made by each artist and how they are kind of kind of just like our newest show that we're going to have is called Abstract Investigation and the reason why it's called that is because that artist um, has really been doing a, kind of like a soul search to, to determine like what does she really like to do as far as art goes and it's everything is what she's finding out you know she's interested in a lot of different things so I think I don't think she's alone in that so that we're just going to continue to display these pieces that are coming out which are pretty cool. Okay. Uh, now we you have some challenges with Art Walk this year. We had, with the addition of uh, Square Seven, we've lost, you've lost some square footage of exhibit space right. and and square footage of people space for mm -hmm. whenever this place gets crowded. Were you here last year for Art Walk? I was. You were. It was. You weren't here for long though. Were you just no. a couple of months? Then? Right. Uh, yeah. So you know what it's all about. You've been live, been in town here for a couple for, years. For a few years, mm -hmm. so you, you you know what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It, uh, as Temple and I were talking about it earlier in the show. It's Friday, the evening of the, the first Friday of the festival, which is July 19th. Uh, and I think it starts around 6 and is over around 10. And there'll be all kind of excitement down here. Bands playing at the bandstand, bands up and down Columbus Street. Uh, the beer garden is obviously right right next door. Uh, how about uh, the uh, additional art from the Art Rocks group out of our out of our Art Rocks group? Most definitely, so, yeah. I'm always inviting them down um, to show some of the pieces that they're making out there as well. Okay, good. So hopefully we'll have those. And even, um, you know, our wall space is dwindling, so the next thing that I'm thinking of going is suspension, so just maybe hanging some pieces from the ceiling. Or, oh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe some... Uh, maybe some, some flying trampies or, or something. Oh, that'd be kind of yeah. neat. <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying to be anything other than just somebody who likes to look at art, but I, I remember being exposed to Alexander Calder when I was a lot younger, and I thought that was really, really cool yeah. stuff. So maybe you can do something like that. Sure. Kind of neat. Okay. Well, this, let's let's talk then now. Uh, you mentioned uh, the featured artist for June, mm -hmm. and her show will be up through the end of the month, and that's Dina. Uh, talk a little bit about Dina and and just working with her and her kind of progression since you came into the in, 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 into your position a year or so ago. Yeah, when I first came, Dina um, did a lot of folk art kind of but realistic looking um, it was very naive looking as well and um, since then she's really kind of dove into the material and just pouring paint and kind of watching it run into one another and a lot of them are doing that just playing and and deciding I really like that but then what I'm trying to do is um, focus them back to a little bit of the things they were doing that was kind of unique to themselves but blending it in with some of these new styles that they're doing. Um, so she really likes landscaping and um, kind of combining those, the abstract and the landscapes together. Okay. There's one piece in particular in her show that I like, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the one very colorful multimedia thing. What, what are some of the things that she has in that piece? Oh my gosh, everything. Yeah, I was going to say, is there anything that's not there? No. I mean, there's paper, there's paint, there's wire, there's buttons, and I think. And there's feathers, there's... and there's stamps, and there's, yes. And that kind of goes along with Dina's style. I think in life, you know, she loves stuff and things and um, as a collector. So that was a very, I think, personal piece, whether she knew it or not. Um, it really depicts her personality a lot. Um, but since then, uh, she's kind of mellowed out a little bit, and and her work is showing that too. Well, the one, the other nice piece is that triptych. The, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's all black and white, I think, or black and white and gray, or right. whatever it is. Uh, what, what was the evolution of how that happened? Do you recall anything? Well, and it's kind of that's kind of where she's at now. Um, it started with the really busy. I gotta have every single thing that I could possibly find in my work um, to. 
she took out a lot of the objects it was just paint and um, and then she kind of took out a lot of the color and now it's just form and line is what she's at now and it's a lot of black and white and muted colors that she's okay. using okay uh, tell me again the days that the artists are here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday okay. from 8.30 to 3.30. So people can come down. Most definitely. They could, if they want to work alongside one yeah. of your artists, if they want to meet them, if they want to interact with them, if they want to come down and just have a cup of coffee and hang around, right. uh, or if they want to work on a piece themselves. Yeah, uh, we really encourage any artist to do that. Yeah, come down and just bring, bring some stuff to work on, and that's what we all learn from each other doing that. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. And, and that's the, the other key point is that you all learn from each other. Right. There's something, and, and there are some of the artists here that we have with disabilities have been have taught classes. Yeah. Uh, you know, very articulate folks who, who have a lot to a lot to offer the community. Right. Uh, as well as just you know creating their own art, they're they're here to share their talents. Yes. That's very cool. Well, Pam, thank you. If anyone needs to get in touch with you, what, what's 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 the best way if they want to learn, learn more about Blue Shoe Art? Just step down at Art and Clay on Main, or you can call us or you know, email me. Okay. The uh, phone number again is 653-1755. Yeah. Uh, websites, you can get to them from the easiest thing to do, I think, is tell them what rfairfielddd.com. Uh, and there's always a link to our Facebook page where you can get more information about what's happening at Art and Clay. Or you can go directly to the Art and Clay on Main website, which you can link from fairfielddd.com. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is if you're just, just watching this program on Thursday or Friday, uh, Saturday the 14th is the 6th annual Run for the Rose at Forest Rose School. Uh, it will step off at 9 o'clock. It's a 5K race that uh, starts at in the OUL parking lot, uh, goes down around Thomas Ewing and back up uh, the valley on the Lancaster Bicycle Trail and finishes there at the parking lot of Forest Row School. There will be a lot of activities, a lot of prizes, a lot of things going on, and all the proceeds from that race uh, go to benefit uh, people in the community with, uh, with disabilities. It is not an official Fairfield DD event, but it's something that we, we, we work with them. Uh, it's an independent group that, uh, that raises money and then, then uh, donates money through a grant system uh, to help support people with, with, with disabilities. So if you're, uh, if you're a walker or a runner and looking for something to do on Saturday morning and the weather is nice, which it usually is in June, please stop out and see us. Uh, Pam, once again, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Until next week, this is John Bosser with Fairfield Today. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, and Lancaster Fairfield Community Action Recycling and Litter Prevention.